first five minutes of video on my last episode because I forgot to record the camera and just send the audio. So it's nice to go, yeah, 74 episodes without that happening. My second episode, I forgot to record the, the audio. So I had to do only the camera audio, but we're here. We're still making yeah. progress. <laughs> That's all right. It out. Yeah. Thankfully, it was perfect because I was at my buddy's uh, recording studio. So it was all like soundproofed anyway. So the audio in the camera was about as good as it could ever be because the yeah. room was already treated and like, oh, okay. ready to go. Cool, cool. So it was still bad, but it was at least usably bad. You should have dubbed over it. You I should have, you it, should have yeah. done it with a shitty, like, just like, and not with a big, like a crazy <laughs> was, old yeah. timey boy. That would have mm. been awesome. Hell yes. Episode 74 from everyone. I'm here with Mike Rainey, Ryan Chainer, and Jimmy Gillespie. Uh, Mike from uh, Delco Dirtball, the new book that is out. I'll let you promote that in a second. Thank you. Uh, but yes, Dad Meat Little Stinkers, Shane at the end, uh, Jimmy Gillespie, Tune the Stinks. I appreciate y'all coming through. Fantastic. Uh, it's been you. a time. Yes, Mike, before we dive into stuff, I know Delco Dirtball just came out. Where can people go find it? Yes, where can people look for it? What is what is the summary to sell people on Delco? Delco Dirtball is my new Wigger crime novel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but do, I'm too tired of hearing that ever. <laughs> no. Yeah, if, if you're a dirtball, if you're in the dirtball shit, if you grew up around fucked up people who are always scheming to get any fucking thing that they can because they have nothing, I think this is the novel for you. Hell yes. Uh, you can get it at onperks.com, uh, which you could also buy my other books there. <laughs> yeah, there's a ton of other cool shit I have on the site too. Uh, I do, uh, if you need a, a message recorded for a loved one, <laughs> I record messages in the style of, voice of Mel Gibson screaming at his girlfriend. Uh, I like when guys <laughs> guys request that for their girlfriends or wives. Um, yeah, there's a whole kind of other fun shit on my website. But m most importantly, you can get my new novel, Delco Dirtball, at onperks.com. Beautiful. I just finished it up the other night, and I, I was so impressed by how, like, you never pulled a punch to make a joke. <laughs> Where it just felt like every sentence was funny. I feel like in comedy books, people try and take it too seriously, try and, yeah, go too far with it. Uh, and I really appreciate it. Yeah, I felt like every single sentence was like, what the fuck <laughs> was just on this piece of paper? How did this get through? Brother, I, I, wrote, I write books for people to read on the toilet. <laughs> so I feel like I hope that comes across in, in, the, uh, in anything I write. I couldn't get enough of the idea of you and Jake recording the audio book and Jake, like, sitting on the floor, crisscross applesauce, like a kindergarten <laughs> story time, <laughs> just soaking this all up. Well, dude, like, I, I we were, we record everything in my house so you know the walls are paper thin i live in a shitty house so it's like neighbors can definitely hear everything we're doing yeah <laughs> so considering like you know what was in delco Durpal, man i can't imagine what people <laughs> think but by now like they got to know like what the fuck is that sure. considering how many fucking retarded dudes come in and out of that house <laughs> middle-aged men just talking about cum farts and and uh yeah my wife Queefing every now and again. It's not as good as it gets. Yeah, yeah I love the idea yeah. of the kids. Yeah, upstairs asleep. <laughs> no idea what the fuck's happening down below. Visions of sugar plums. Yeah, hell yes. Uh, we all are here in town because last night we had a, are doing shows. Uh, so tonight is in New Haven. Last night we were in Waterbury, uh, performing at the brewery. And Jimmy, I was very impressed of your impressions of Connecticut. Yeah, <laughs> dude, yeah. Yeah. or lack thereof. I yeah. guess you could say. I mean, there was nothing going on out no, here. I, I felt so bad. Yeah, I like, asked every single person what they have out here, and they fucking had nothing. <laughs> yeah, I even asked about drugs at one point and guys like i guess we got weed do we have yeah. anything else like man nothing cool nothing fun yeah <laughs> pretty <Yeah>. bare bones <laughs> what kind of drug problems you guys got we got waterbury is a good place to be asked you were in the right place to be asking i think okay, the cool. wrong wrong 20 people <laughs> were there to answer the question what is, what is the but, biggest drug problem here uh i think in hartford it's heroin i think it's still Sick. there's still uh, our local venue is the webster and the webster is in the middle of dog shit uh so i had some friends come up here from new orleans they're on tour and so they get to the area and go, oh, Connecticut's rich. This venue's going to be beautiful. And it's like, no, no, no. Connecticut's rich in, like, the one part by New York, and the rest of Connecticut is pretty modest. Damn. <laughs> and, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I'd only, I'd driven through, like, I had a show in, uh, in Hartford once. Yep. Maybe, like, two months ago. And that was, like, my, my first experience in Connecticut. But I don't know. I think that's part of the fun in, like, doing all this shit is just, you know, get, getting to see, like, the reality of places versus, like, what you have, like, built up in your head through, like, movies and TV and yep. shit. Yeah. Yeah, when I was in the South, I fell in love with Popeyes for real. <laughs> Where oh, it's like, Popeyes yeah, up yeah, there yeah. is one thing. Yeah. The Popeyes down there is all the, the nice ladies complimenting you as they give you your chicken in sandwich. Incredible, it's just yeah. a beautiful experience. It was about yeah. as good as it gets. <laughs> not up here. Not up here at not all. Even, not a little bit. No, yeah. in Philadelphia, they'll kill you for sandwiches. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. fucking sick. Yeah. They were, yeah. yeah. Down South, you got to wear a church hat to go to Popeyes. <laughs> you <know? laughs> you got to sign the book before you go. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I feel like they remembered my name because like his apartment was like right Aww. next to the Popeyes. Popeyes, so every day I was going back and oh, they put my dude. order. Yeah, it was a wild. You were becoming a Popeyes regular? Was, That's fucking <laughs> wild. <laughs> For two weeks, I was living He's Popeyes. Back, <laughs> it, is kind of, it, it is cool and, and how quickly endearing Southern culture is to yes. Northerners. Yep. Um, I, I've only been mostly to Florida, but in April, I think it was, I went down to uh, Mississippi and it was like the yeah. full on Southern experience. Yep. And within like, 
eight seconds of talking to any woman in Mississippi, you're like, do you need somebody killed? Because I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. do that for you. <laughs> you were talking about your favorite kinds of compliments last yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, and The South is full of those. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God, it's heaven. When I was in Georgia, every place we ate, every lady that came and took our order, she would rub my back and like, kind of like, be like, oh no problem, babe. Like every time, I'm like, man, I love you. <laughs> I think I'm gonna marry. This lady who looks like someone put a cigarette out on her is like <laughs> so bad. But I was oh like, oh my god, yeah. No, nothing beats bitch. like having a John C. Riley looking ass bitch. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> yeah. just rubbing a burp out of you. Dude, so, I'm like a grandma magnet down there, dude. They're just yeah. trying, they're putting plates in front of me every two seconds. <laughs> I can't sit down. They're anywhere trying to end you, without yeah. getting fed, dude. <laughs> their their tips are commission when you're yeah, down there. Yeah. We're buying a car tonight. But maybe here comes Jimmy again. Yeah, yeah. Mm -mm. Get the red beans. Oh, <laughs> Lord, he coming. Oh, my Lord. I'm down there fucking like got a fucking belt covered in pickled pigs. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you were built for the South. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Without a doubt. It is crazy. Yeah, he, I go down there. I I blend in. You, you look like I mean? a southern hood on him. I wore you to wear suspenders like an old time. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, some Miss Daisy. <laughs> oh, 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 did you bring me my call? Now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be sick, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, don't know I love why the South. It's great. You it's for me. Yeah, it's for it's me. for yeah. you. It's for <laughs> me. You are the picture of the South. <laughs> yeah. That's like what it's I'm saying. By you for you. It's like a reverse Fubu. Yeah. Hell yes. Yeah, uh, last time we were at a brewery performing, and I know it wasn't, yeah, the perfect place for comedy, but when I have bands in here, I like to get the sense of, like, the shitty places that stand out. So for me, it's, I've heard stories of bands performing in, like, carpet stores, which to me almost sounds cool because it's so fucked up and abstract. Mm -hmm. Where for you guys stands out is, yeah, nightmare places you've had to go and perform. There's two that immediately pop into mind. One was one that I was so excited about because I just, I just, it was at a time where, like, I felt like I was doing well at most shows, and I was like, oh, this is going to be right in my wheelhouse because... So maybe a year in, and I got invited to do a college show at Towson University yep. outside Baltimore. I was like, they're going to love me. I'm going to be famous after this. There was like an incoming freshman event, and there's like, they're like, yeah, there's going to be like 300 kids there. I was like, this is going to be heaven. It was just eating shit from the first <laughs> sentence that I fucking uttered. And one guy was like heckling me from the front row. And then afterwards, like, we didn't have to, but I don't know. I'm a people pleaser. Sure. Uh, the guy who organized was like, do you want to come back to the, the after party? I was like, cool. And it was like everybody that was at the show was at this party that I just ate shit at. And then the second one that was, uh, it ended up being fun because friends were there. And um, we just ended up talking uh, more than actually doing comedy. But I had a show at Raymore and Flanagan in, in June, June of this year. And uh, it was like a recovery benefit. It wasn't even recovery. No, the guy was dead. It was an was it body recovery. Yeah, it was R.I.P. Jesse. He, uh, Jesse's body was on a sectional. That's awesome. They had him reclined. But uh, yeah, people were there because they wanted to raise money for this for this family. But <laughs> to bury this body, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The we just had like packs of ice on top of this motherfucker. But <laughs> but it was tough. As soon as I got there, I was like, I can't, I can't do this. Like these people are not here to hear this. Yep. Yeah. Like they just want to raise money for this dead guy. They know college shows are a unique breed. Uh, I work for a production company that does like the fall and spring concerts at colleges. So that's my, a lot of my fall and spring is traveling around doing yeah those those shows. Uh, we just did a two chain show this year oh. that had thirty people there. What? Damn. It was, to your point about the college kids, like, yeah, it's just such a unique demographic that is not representative of any other demographic mm -hmm. that we work with. How did two chains take it? It took one chain off. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't worthy of two chains. It was a one yeah. chain event. It was an <laughs> arena. It was a full, like, basketball arena on a campus. With 30 people in it? Uh, Maybe a 75, maybe exactly right, right, 30, I was but like, say, like, that's in an arena, funny. it all looks, yeah. yeah sure, <laughs> We sure. weren't filling to the free throw line. Like, it, was, <laughs> it was horrific. <laughs> and it, yeah, it just stood out as just, yeah, I'm so, anytime you guys talk about college shows, it's like, oh, I get it. I understand why this is so undesirable, because yeah. it's so hit or miss. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I don't know. I, I think the ideal situation for comedy is just performing in front of people in their 20s to 50s who just want to get drunk. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I, I no kids with ideals or anything like that. Just <laughs> save that money. Like we, we, nobody needs that, man. Yeah, yeah. What are you guys? What stands out as nightmare place you've had to perform? Uh, there's actually two as well. Uh, the Beautiful. first, I think it was maybe I was like three years into doing stand up, and I still was working at a super fresh. And uh, a lady who was a very nice coworker, she's like, "Hey, we're having. I'm having like a big party. It's like there's going to be so many people here. It's a, it's a beef and beer." Do you want to do stand up? Like you'll be the only stand up back. And I was like, oh, 
Or she's like, no, and, and we'll pay you. Like, everything's good. It's like one of the first paying gigs I ever got, like, where she was, like, telling me it'll be good. Yeah. So I, again, I take the bait, and I go. It's a cerebral, it's a, it's a beef and beer for cerebral palsy <laughs> at a firehouse in Conshohocken. Mm-hmm. Dude, I get there, there's maybe a hundred, like, there's tons of people in my head. I'm like, fuck, yes. I go in, no stage. There's a small, like about the size of this table, (laughs) just like a little like soapbox behind it is a DJ who is her son, who I think is he's got some sort of cerebral palsy or something. (laughs) Something And he's he's a DJ. Yeah, he's got (laughs) he's got a syndrome. He's got a directional syndrome. I don't know if it's down (laughs) or up, but it's um. but he's a DJ, but he's like just pressing play and he played when i got there i heard journey don't stop believing yep. and then halfway through i heard it again so he's just like doing all the bangers but in his defense that's a great song for a guy with, with a <laughs> fucked up yeah, brain he, he definitely doing it right so then like a half an hour goes through and she's like do you are you ready to go up and i was like uh i don't know and she's like can you do like can you do a half half an hour i was like no, what? Well, no, what the fuck are you Not talking? To these people, no. Like, no. Yeah. So then she's like, "Well, just do as much as you want." I go up, dude. Uh, the DJ behind me hits stop. Like people are eating, and you—it was so quiet that you could hear <laughs> just people <laughs> crushing pulled pork, and just like they're looking over, and I'm like, "Hey, everybody, how's everyone doing?" Dude, nothing. Yeah. And the only person clapping was a chick who like booked me because she's just being nice. <laughs> sure. And I was and the first joke I made and the dumbest fucking thing I was like, ah, oh, we're in beautiful Concha Hawken. You know, it's that's Iroquois for clearing my throat. <laughs> Dude, guy puts down his sandwich, he's like, Don't fucking talk shit on Conchi, dude. <laughs> Sits back down, he's like, we got firefighters here. Show some respect. Cool. Dude, I did 15 minutes of nothing. Dude, I mean, yeah. hard stairs, nothing. No, When I was done, they're like, all right, give it up for Ryan. Dude, no <laughs> clapping. It was like you went up, did not. I was like, holy fuck. Go to the bar. I have two free drink tickets. And the bartender's like, were you just on stage? I'm like, we, you just you saw me. For 15 Dude, minutes. you just yeah. saw me. He's like, oh, he's like, that was pretty rough. I'm like, yeah, can <laughs> I have all the booze? He's like, that guy was like, I got you. Gave me a huge drink. And then the only saving grace were two things. Uh, I got paid one hundred and eighty dollars to do it. Okay. Which, well, dude, I was like, "You do not need to give me this money." She's like, "No, they were." She was like, "They were dumb. I don't know what was wrong with them." Like, dude, it was a beef That's and beer. Great that she was on your side. She was yeah. being very supportive, but it was like, no, they're not wrong. I did not belong here. And then I saw uh, a child. A lady came up with a baby and put a toddler with the head like a bowling ball on a bar stool. And like she turned and was like, <laughs> and then turned to the fucking bar to get a drink. That baby fell off the bar stool and smacked the floor so loud that everyone in the bar turned. And that's when I took my exit and got out of there. And Someone and dude, I was either. like, finally, dude. It's like, how's it feel, you stupid <laughs> bitch? And then uh, the other worst one was uh, I did a show. It was like one of these times where I. There are certain shows you do where you're like, I'm never doing that again. Oh, yes. Like you hit it, like, I'm never ever going to do that again and i swore off variety shows Ver- dude variety shows yeah. are wild and uh i was one of the only stand-ups on the show and uh i followed a dude like you go there it's like a freak show it's like not no one's there for comedy at sure. all so i followed a clown who was putting needles through his penis <laughs> And then having a, on the bill? <laughs> dude, it was fucking wild. And then he had another guy put a cinder block over his penis while the needles went in and hit it with a sledgehammer. Beautiful. Then I go up in due time. No one like again, everyone's just like, what is this? You do five. I did five minutes and one guy went, boo, like literally loud enough where that's where everyone started <laughs> laughing ate my own dick, got off stage, and then a lady gets on stage, everyone loses it, and she is literally just queefing. And I was like, this is what I, this, how do I compete yeah. with? I can't compete with There's anything. There's nothing to do with words. Dude, you, if you do a variety show, no one's there to see. It's like, 
comedy with like <laughs> bands sometimes. Like everyone there is I've just heard of that. see yeah. the band. The, the they don't give a fuck a about little, you. Dude, comedy, you you can't surprise on people. Like no, com- like no, being yeah. surprised with comedy is like Chris Hansen walking in your kitchen. <laughs> yeah, man. There, there's nobody has ever enjoyed that. Be like, no. oh cool, the uh, these guys are here. Yeah. yeah, no one's like, take a seat, take a seat. What did you do here? What are you doing here? Nobody nobody wants it, That's- and uh, you feel like an idiot. I thought that was the two women last night. There was two old, older women sitting next to me in the back row. And they left, like, yeah, halfway through the first set somewhere, maybe after Jimmy's set at some point. And we all thought they were gone. And they came no, back. Yeah. And it was like, what on earth? And How they came th- back with a vengeance. When I said something about eating butt, the chick's like, yeah, I eat butt. And I was like, that chick <laughs> is hot. There were some yeah. uh, sexually expressive people there. Very, <laughs> very. Like, the one guy, as soon as uh, Aisha mentioned, uh, asked for titty fuckers, the <laughs> guy's crazy. like, yeah, yeah I fuck tits, man. Everyone was so horny. Is that, what, is that what it is here? It's just so horny. You know, Woodbury? Uh, I just there's heard, nothing to do here but yeah, fuck. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard that we are the OnlyFans capital of the country, the Connecticut. And creators or consumers? I don't uh, know. My assumption, it's got to be the management thing, where I understand that top OnlyFans accounts are just, yeah, a girl takes the picture, sends them to an office somewhere, and then the office does all the legwork and responds to all the dudes Damn. and DMs and like does all the shit. My assumption is there's got to be just a huge AIDS industry down in Fairfield, down in the rich part wow. of the WWE headquarters part yeah. of Connecticut. Uh, that's the, there's no other way. There's no way we have more people here on OnlyFans in LA or fucking Miami or whatever other city. It's WWE. E T. Amazing. Uh, beautiful. Yes, Jimmy. <laughs> Worst show. I'm sure you got oh, a couple man. cooking for me. I have a couple. Yeah. So I had. Uh, Learned. I something. had one gig. Uh, I I do a lot of black shows in Philly. Like I, I'm usually like the token white guy. Were you like the black actually shows. raised by a woman named Mahogany? Yes, yeah, that that's factual? true. That's okay. real life. Yeah, okay. a racist woman named Mahogany. She wouldn't let me use her toilet because I was a white person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Lover, <laughs> love her to death. Um, I have yeah, no idea where you she is using now. a toilet is like that toilet's death sentence. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. So you want me to euthanize your toilet? Yeah. Like seven. A seven-year-old. <laughs> Did you have to go in a hole outside? Uh, yeah. yeah. So I dug a trench and <laughs> I started shitting in it. Um, no, but I had a. I had a fucking uh, a, a gig during Black History Month where I went up. It was in Chester, which is like a shitty part of fucking like where we live. Yep. And uh, it was a fucking birthday party for two 60-year-old black grandmas. Hell yeah. And they sprung a comedy show on them oh, in the oh middle no. of it. So they turned off the music. Oh, no. Asked Idiots. them all to sit down. Oh, no. <laughs> the host was up there. He was doing okay. He was doing all right. You can't ask black and he people goes, to sit. And he goes, this next guy I'm bringing up, he's my favorite white boy around. And oh, he no. hands me the microphone. And this guy goes, get this white motherfucker out of here. <laughs> and like I was like, well, I'm not going to say anything funnier than that. So yeah. I, just, I just did 15 minutes of just crowd work. I was supposed to do like 20. Yeah. I was like, I'm, I don't even know if I did 15. I like, I probably did like half my time because they were just like pissed that I existed. Yeah, dude. I was like, I know it's your month, but like <laughs> I got something to say. You can't, <laughs> you can't turn off the Cupid shuffle for your crap. Dude. I, That's not my how fucking it goes. gay bullshit. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm up there, so I'm like, so there's this guy, right? <laughs> They're like, no, there isn't. <laughs> They're like, God damn it, there better not be. You know, so anytime damn. you get old ladies to stop dancing, yeah, you, to, that's to, to, why to hear me do. talk, yeah. it's, a fucking, it's, a, it's a dumb fucking thing to do. So I had that was a hell gig. And then my other fucking worst gig ever is when my boss, I used to work at uh, a bank, and my boss <laughs> stalked my Instagram and found out I did comedy. And asked me to do a set for everyone at the bank. No. Like, just during a morning meeting, just do, like, a five-minute set. So I was, like, I was like a, I was like kind of, like, nervous about it. And I was like, oh, well, maybe they'll, that'll be endearing. Yeah. Maybe they'll be like, oh, they'll kind of be into it because it's, like, fun. So I just basically wrote roast jokes for everyone that I worked with. <laughs> and literally did the set and got fired two <laughs> days later. Yes. Because I made a joke. I had this really young Indian boss. And I was like, isn't it crazy that this guy's balls this around? He graduated kindergarten <laughs> yesterday. And, like, just really young guy. I got fired two days later. It was That's so awesome. fucking crazy. Did they try and veil the firing as not related to that? Did they try and say <laughs> you were late too many times or something? Yeah, like, they, they were like, yeah, she's, like, not working out. And like, it, I was like, I get it. Yeah, I yeah. totally. Was it the I, Indian guy that fired you? Uh, yeah, so, yeah. 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 Uh, two Indians fired me. They, they called in a ringer. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> it was pretty fucked up. But my buddy, I worked with my buddy at the bank, right? So he, instead of laughing at my jokes, he fucking had his phone like this, <laughs> filming me, stone faced, just not laughing. And then afterwards, he was like, "Dude, that one joke was so funny. I wanted to laugh so bad." Damn. I was like, "Then you should have. No. It might have loosened things up." Wow. But yeah, I. Uh, it's pretty great, pretty, though. It was pretty. I, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I don't care. I'm doing it. That's and uh, yeah, it cost me my <laughs> job. <laughs> so there are worse fucked. things to get fired for. There yeah. are, but that's definitely the top of the list of stupid ways that I've it's cost insane. myself money. Pretty great. I feel like every every boss that has somebody that does comedy under them once thinks at some point will think it's a good idea to have them do that. Yeah, there. because yep. everyone yeah. loves a court gesture, and you're not yeah. that. Yeah, it's yeah fucking I'm a so clown. dumb. Like, yeah. yeah, they 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 really yeah. were. She was insistent that I did it. She was very Man. like I was. She was like sending me like messages on Teams and shit. Like <laughs> oh, I'm sitting at my oh, desk no. and she's like sending me shit. I'm like fuck. She's gonna f- never gonna let it go. So I was like, you know what? I'll do it. I'll do it now. It'll I'll, I'll do like yeah. a five minute thing at a meeting. It'll be over with. I don't want them coming to shows and shit. Like I don't want a whole no. So Dude, I had um I worked at a summer camp one time and yep. towards the at the at the end of camp like that night I was doing uh, in Philly. The, the main club, Helium, has a club called Philly's Funniest. It has a, a, a competition called Philly's Funniest. They do it every summer. And when I worked the summer camp, the night of our last day, uh, everybody from the camp came. And uh, I didn't want them to come because, of course, you yeah. know, I, I don't really talk at work. You know, I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm not what I am. Like, yes. my I worked jokes. at summer camp for a while. This is all very familiar. Pete, yeah. man, it was, um, everybody came, and then I, I did terribly, and... Um, I did things that I knew they would hate. Yeah. And on the way out, none of them said anything. <laughs> yeah. to me. They just left and we never saw each other again. I think the worst part about doing like when I worked at that grocery store, I didn't tell anybody I did stand up like sure. forever. And then I, when people found out about it, the worst thing and like I don't know if it happens to musicians. Does anybody ever go to a musician like I saw you did there. You know, what would be cool Every, if you did. Yes. Did they? Did they try and give I, you notes on I, I shit? Have you thought about do for playing work. Freebird? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like yeah, that yep. was great. Uh, you tried the, a different tuning. The, the yeah. worst part is when they're like, "Yo, I've been thinking about a joke. Let me run this by you." You know, yeah. you could say, "Feel yeah. free to use this in your act." Oh, dude, <laughs> yeah, we've got plenty of material here. I'll tell you, <laughs> it's we're crazy. Fat wife. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not great though. One guy, this guy named Ken, uh, did I? The joke. Was that how he explained the joke? He literally came. I was like, "Right, I heard you. I heard you do sketch sketches up there. That's pretty fuck. That's awesome. Terrible start." I, yeah. And he's like, "I love stand up. I, I, you know, sometimes I think I can do stand up. You know, I was like, I wrote a couple things. I'm like, oh, really, Ken? He's like, yeah. Hold on, I got this one joke. So, um, hold on. Two guys. Two guys. They uh, they're hanging out, right? Lost me. And then he's like. <laughs> What the fuck were they doing? No, Ken, I really got to get back to this cat food. <laughs> Dude, it goes back and forth where he's just like, so two guys, they're, fuck, what were they doing? The I like it already. Though. Dude, and then they're he goes, boning. he goes, long story short, they're both end up being Puerto Rican. You can use that. Just like right off the bat. <laughs> and I was like, thank you so much. You need Ken. to do that joke tonight. <laughs> it was <honestly>. so <laughs> fucking funny how many pauses he was like trying so, and that was the crazy thing. He was legitimately trying to give me advice just because he was an older guy. He's like, I've been around a block. I yeah. know Carlin, dude. Yeah. I know what that's like. But him really picking his brain to try to find the punchline, he's just like, never mind the whole joke. It's just run with the punch. Yo. Is that they're Puerto Rican? Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. so fucking hilarious. I had a landscaping job one summer, and it was it sucked because I had to drive into Philly every day. And like everywhere you parked, it was like $20 a day. And the job didn't pay for it. Like they, you had to front the money, and then they would reimburse you. So it's like, mm-hmm. I made twelve bucks an hour, but I had to have you know hundreds of dollars budgeted each month, you know, to fucking pay for parking. And uh, my boss Warren was like, he was showing me around, and like I made the mistake of saying I do comedy, and he's like, you know, I've been thinking this is one like that I think would go over well. Like when you introduce yourself, instead of saying Mike Rainey, I would say Mike Cranium. And then I would point to my head. Wow. <laughs> yes. That's, that's a good one. Mike <laughs> <laughs> No, I have the same thing sure where I, like, I hate telling people what I do for work where it's video because they always go, oh, you, you do music videos for a living. How's Taylor Swift? How's Justin Bieber? And it's like, no, no, no. Um, <laughs> How, are How are they? How are they? Yeah. I think there's always that assumption. It's, I, I'm curious really? for you guys as comedians. <laughs> you like, idiot. I only work with good Charlotte. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
dumbass. <laughs> you fuck. Ask me how Benji is, you <laughs> piece of shit. I don't have much more to say about it. Yo, yeah. how is Benji, though? Uh, I actually haven't met him as a person. Damn yeah. it. Yeah, I worked fuck. with them as a band, but didn't get to sit down and, yeah, chat with them. So, uh, yeah, ask I think me about King's good. Leon. Yeah. There we go. Fruitcakes. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing uh, great. But now, like, on an airplane, are you still telling people you're a comedian? Like, I feel like when I sit next to someone on an airplane, I'm tempted to just say, I'm in insurance. I'm I'm anything other than what I am. Yeah, dude. Get so much easier to get out. <laughs> is it still, like, scary to say you're a comic or a podcaster for a living? Or yeah. Like, on an dude, airplane, I, I sit next to somebody. Yeah. And they're like, what are you? I'm like, I'm in your seat, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in your space. I'm going to be a problem the entire <laughs> flight. <laughs> You're going to want to hang yourself with this extender. Yeah. Yeah. You've yeah. got a built-in excuse. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. Joe Brinkard. Damn. Yeah, yeah, we went to, um, my family and I went to Disney two, the last two years. <laughs> and uh, one of the places we went to eat was a hibachi in Epcot. And the chef tries to make small talk with everybody. And he's like, uh, what do you do for a living? I was like, um, and, and I instantly regretted saying that I did comedy. Yep. I don't know why it just feels dirty. It yeah. feels yeah. gross. And yeah. I think it's just because a lot of times people are going to ask you to say something to make them laugh. Oh, yeah. 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 I get asked yeah. about, yeah, doing, can you take my family photo then? It's like. Are you in a band? Do you wear all black? Like, I think the demographic here is wrong, and I'm happy to indulge once in a while, but yeah, yeah uh, there's not a whole lot I can do for you. And your I used to work, uh, I used to work the door at like a cocktail lounge, and the worst, like, if you do it long enough and you do shows in Philadelphia, eventually people who have seen you do stand up will come there, and like, sometimes they're really cool, but then other people are like, didn't I see you? I, I would say, like, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> And then if some people ask, like, well, what's your other job? I would tell people that I was a youth tech for a large breed farm where that's just someone <laughs> who puts down horses and cows. And it ends the conversation pretty quickly. Nobody, Very believable. Nobody case. wants to talk about, like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, I just do that. Yeah, like, we're going to dog crematorium. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fucking mortician for open casket beagle, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> beagle, beagle funerals. Yeah, yeah, I'm a hired crier at yeah, beagle funerals. Seriously, it's all I do. If you put a beagle in a casket, uh, Dude. Do, you, do you think they would have to tie his paws down? Or do you think you've heard him four paws up? No, no. They put him on top of a dog house. <laughs> <laughs> a Snoopy it's out. a Snoop funeral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, you just lie. You just say yeah. you do the worst job ever. Okay. So then nobody wants to even one follow up with a question. Yep. And if they do have a question, it better be the explanation like that's so terrible they don't want it. Or it's just like, yeah, no, I actually do like I'm a janitor at like a hospital. Just like, it's like that's all I do. Yeah, I like to finish equations. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I try to be the, the very the smartest guy there. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I would just lie and mm -hmm. tell people I just was like a trash guy for a while. Never to, never said that I ever did. Stuff. <laughs> They're just like, oh, they believed it. I know what I look like. I got it. Like I get it. So. You just say the dumbest job. I would also tell people, I was like, yeah, I work in finance. And like, yeah. oh, really? That's the worst part. It's like you say a job that you can't even lie about because you know nothing about. That's where like, janitor is the brilliant yeah, one. Yeah. Janitor is <laughs> just like, yeah, I'm a yeah. Yeah. doctor or whatever the fuck you no, say. I'm a janitor. It's like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I've Nobody wants insurance. to explore that. Go, oh, what insurance? Yeah. It's like, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You definitely have the eyes of a horse killer. Yeah. I'm, dude, it's so good. <laughs> I usually use a three iron. It's just you walk up. <laughs> Fucking hack it down. It's pretty sick. Mm. Yeah. It's his pretty great. There rubbing his, his <laughs> yeah. new ball Ryan's fucking teeing off on him. It's the greatest thing you can say. Just pick a <laughs> pick a job that nobody would pediatric gynecologist. Nobody wants that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are you, yeah. <laughs> It's the worst job to have. Yeah. It's like, what are you, wait, what? Ah. <laughs> you just can't smile while you say it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Pediatric cat count. Yeah, they say you love your work, you never work a day yeah. in your life. <laughs> if these fingers could talk. <laughs> no, I'm going to get my hands a rest today. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. My carpal tunnel's acting up. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all you gotta do. Nose to the grindstone, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nose to the grindstone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, that's great. God damn. So, yeah. missed his calling. He <laughs> yeah, should have yeah. just gone straight to specialize. Oh, dude, yeah. uh, a guy that I used to work for is a prominent Penn State alum, and he swears. That Jerry Sandusky still has influence in the football program. What? <laughs> he says that Sandusky, he watches every game, and then he submits notes. No to way. To the coaching staff, yeah. Damn. 
He was a defensive <laughs> mastermind. So he ties it to a cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> is he in prison? Is he out now? Where no, no. He's, he's actually he's coming up uh, for a parole hearing within <laughs> the next few years. Okay. Damn. Uh, his wife still stands by him. Hear me out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, dude, relative what's to that, that, what's that hearing like? It's like, hear me out. Listen. Speaking of hearing, I saw an interview with his wife where she's like, yeah, pointing out to like specific testimony where one of the kids would come over saying he got victimized in their family room. She's like, look, she's like, I sit up here while Jerry's downstairs with the kids. I can hear everything. Go down. I'll go down there and I'll talk. Tell me if you could hear me. And the guy's like, yeah, I guess, you know. I guess they didn't get molested. I'm sorry, Dottie. Yeah. yeah. Sorry you're going through Because no one can do this. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. No, no way. <laughs> no one can turn up family matters. Get out of here. <laughs> She's like, there's no way that I can hear it and not stop it. You know what I'm saying, bro? <laughs> oh, all I heard was, did I do that? But I didn't know if it was Urkel or Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> Got any cheese? <laughs> it's like, yes, I do. <laughs> Well, and the team was 12 and 4 on the season. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Can't pull the plug on that. You can't take away his talent. That's all I'm saying. Uh, who is his cellmate? Like, watching the games, like, mm-hmm. learning the Sandusky methods in prison? Mm-hmm. Yeah, does he do he, Does he have a cellie? He's in protective custody, so. Nah. But I don't know if, if they'll put you in with somebody else who's being protected. You know? I would assume so. I, I guess that's, you know, it's like a band of brothers. You know, they <laughs> yeah. got to stick together, dude. All a band they of brother lovers. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Gross. <laughs> yeah, banned from having brothers. Yeah. <laughs> I bought a copy of Sandusky's autobiography. Yeah. And I bought it because it's it's, auto erotic. <laughs> it said it was autographed. I was like, I have to get this. It was like eight months. Or a devil's advocate here. <laughs> All right. Fair question. I have no, to I guess. Get this. No. <laughs> well, dude, I bought it mainly because it was autographed. And two, like I just wanted to see what he sounded like yeah. if allowed to yeah. just just go. Yeah. Isn't it called like yeah, the four, six, it's his crazy? defense and his yeah. age range? Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think it might be called? It's one word that's incredibly disgusting. I I feel like it's indefensible or something like that. It's something like <laughs> alluded to it's something fucked up like that, isn't it? It's touched. touched. Oh, no, no, I was just gonna say yeah. touchdown, uh, yeah. uh, but touch. It's touched. why would you do that, dude? God, and inside, gosh. like it is, like he's leaving like morsels of molestation clues the entire thing. There's one point where he's like, Bread he mentions us. he played football at Penn State, and he mentions coming back from Penn State to his old neighborhood to engage in water balloon fights with kids. Mm-hmm. There's in the middle of the book. There's pictures of j- different things that he's done over the years. One of them is a high school fundraiser where he pudding wrestled, <laughs> <laughs> pudding wrestled like a high level <laughs> Olympic wrestler. Mm-hmm. And this is all pre accusations. Yeah, it's published. Yeah. Pretty, yeah, he's just walking around a high school in pudding. <laughs> But nobody thought twice about it. <laughs> yeah, I guess no one would. I mean, chocolate pudding. By no, the way. Oh, yeah. that's that's. I've uh, worked time, at school. Seeing my coworker walking around covered in pudding is like. I feel like I would ask a question. I feel like that. Would I was come just up wrestling. With kid. <laughs> yeah, no big I had deal. a similar experience one time. I uh, knocked on Mike Rainey's front door, <laughs> and he answered the door covered in chocolate pudding. I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I could tell he was reading that day. Yeah. <laughs> he was nose deep in a book. He's a yeah, the four. <laughs> he had the 4D book. <laughs> completely Scratch immersive. Like, book. <laughs> what the hell got you covered in pudding? Uh, we were recording a G.G. Allen episode for Little Stinkers. Oh, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I couldn't generate enough poop, so <laughs> I got a bunch of pudding and just went nuts with you it. You know, I always hear uh, that uh, chunky peanut butter does a better job for poop with the consistency and the feel. All right. For poop. Well, just, we might have to refilm that. I'm just saying, just for future reference. Or Nutella. If you mix a little bit of peanut butter with Nutella, you got yourself some decent fake poop. I'm praying you were doing like a short film or something. That's where this came up. No. <laughs> no. I just w- always wondered what it would like to be to eat a shit sandwich. <laughs> so I did it. Was yeah. this like last week? <laughs> it's just no, I, I, I watched some. So I, I got real into like special effects for like a while yeah. and like just saw like weird ways to make things work. And like finding out that like when you watch Aliens, all of the slime coming off of the, the, uh, the xenomorph is thousands and thousands of gallons of KY jelly. Yep. That's Whoa. all it is. They didn't use anything else. They just went and got lube and slathered it all over it, which is fucking pretty amazing. And then yep. someone was talking about how 
a prisoner uh, found a way to escape by putting peanut butter in between his butt cheeks. Whoa. And then when they went to go handcuff him, he pulled his hands out between his butt cheeks and had sh- shit all over his hands and then tried to touch the guards. They didn't want him. And then he sh- riped it all over his face and then made a dash for it. Ended up just being chunky peanut butter. That little and it's like, dude. Perfect. And I was like, man. And someone was like, if you want to make real looking, it was funny that they showed that clip and there was guys like, hey, everybody, my name's Steve. If you want to make real looking shit, sure. I'm going to show you the tricks. It's like, damn. I watched a 15 minute video on that and I that made shit some would fake come shit. up in my recommended. I'm like, fine. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Unzip. You got to watch it. Yeah, I like to. I like to watch the the things where like people do sound effects, yeah. like oh, where they yeah, take like yeah. random shit. Uh, I forget what that. Foley, yeah. Foley, yeah, yeah. That, that shit is so fascinating wow. to me. Seeing the guy just roar into a trash can for the fucking the lions and Lion King is like, dude, what the <laughs> yeah. fuck? Are it's you great doing? to see that like 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 who I am by myself could be a job. Exactly. <laughs> just yelling into a trash can. Yeah, Jimmy's proctologist is like, I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> that- <laughs> just about like, <laughs> just you're gonna have to have that looked at. <laughs> We're gonna have to fucking, lance that. Just fucking slap the side of a toaster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> he puts his fingers like, boo. It's like, oh, it's pretty good. Pretty good. This guy's good. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's a pretty good Foley doctor. He's fucking good. <laughs> See, that's all my world, and I feel like it's like ruined my ability to watch stuff now. And I'm curious for you guys, where I know you've been on sets, I know you've been involved in short films, and yeah, even podcasting comedy seems like it'd be hard for you guys to enjoy. Where like, I yeah, I work with a camera, and movies are so unenjoyable to me, where I've never been a big movie guy growing up, and now I feel like I'm so aware of how the sausage is made, mm-hmm. that when I'm seeing the edit, all I'm seeing is the boom mic over their head, and the ten guys around, and the wow. different cuts, and all like the... Yeah, like the play that went into making this this show and dance happen. I mean, uh, I can appreciate where your mind's at, but sure. like I'm the type of guy like I know yeah. what's in hot dogs and I know <laughs> what's in scrapple and I love it. <laughs> I'll never like I know how movies and TV work and yeah. it's just like I still and I think it's amazing watching all of those things be cut up like even when you're immersed in it yeah. and you're like I can't I don't know how this is all going to get put together and then you see it you're blown the fuck away dude yeah. anything getting made is a miracle it's yes. wild yeah, whether it's, yeah. Like it's a short wild. film a video a Hot movie dogs. TV show <laughs> like, <laughs> any, any, anything getting made is a fucking miracle because we were just talking last night about you know when how how often let down you are when you're trying to collaborate with somebody creatively yeah. for one reason or another and oftentimes it's not because of of somebody's talent or anything it's just like they don't have the drive it's like they just might yeah. ghost you yeah but you know to be able to see anything through to fruition is it's it wild feels like a fucking miracle yeah yeah i feel like i just get so caught up in trying to like reverse engineer how they did it that i end up forgetting yeah. to enjoy the thing and i end up an hour into the movie being like i don't know who the main character is i know where the camera was and where the lighting was but like i don't know what the fuck's happening in this movie. i think when i watch movies and i see like certain special effects done i don't get like oh man i i i, I don't get discouraged of anything i'm like i could do that yeah that's yeah. awesome because now i i know what they did to do that yep. i could probably do that if i needed to in my head it's like i just found a little small little thing for me to do later if anybody wants to like shit blood i know exactly what to do <laughs> i've seen it i know how i could probably rig that up pretty good take like, my number down <laughs> it's like, you, ever, you want to ruin this beef and beer for cerebral palsy <laughs> <Fully organic. laughs> i'm just trying to help you out if you want me to do it I feel like that would like ruin comedy and podcasting for you guys. Though. I assume you grew up as comedy fans, and now I don't know how much you're podcast fans because you're so immersed in the world. But it it feels like it would completely ruin that thing you love to now like be so intimately involved with it. I um I don't watch much comedy. Me neither. I think. Did I you watched, growing up? That's all I watched. Oh, yeah. That's anything mm-hmm. that came out. Because uh, I felt spoiled. Because um I I guess like the high points for comedians to achieve were like an HBO special. Comic View was big, MTV Half Hour Comedy Hour. So, like, there were, like, all these different outlets where if, like, anytime it was on, no matter who was on, I watched it. Um, but now, uh, you know, I watched, last year, I think I watched Nick Mullen's special. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. I feel like and, I got into Come Town in the middle of the pandemic, and I'm still, uh, <laughs> still yeah. catching up on all of it. And that, that might have been it. You know, I, I don't really like watching it. Like, my friends make me laugh. So, yeah. it's like, I, yeah. I watched them last night, and, like, that really made me laugh. Yeah. But as far as, like, just sitting down to watch something on TV or the internet. Like, I don't think I would. I feel like even comedy movies would be a disaster. Where you're just it's so, just different now. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. there because now it's, it's, now it's this thing where I, I, in comparison is the thief of joy. Now I compare myself to these people yeah. when I watch them. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, oh man, like it, it's. That's, that's why I like Mullen so much. 
it was just so funny that I didn't have time to think about that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 And it was just so so much better than than anything else. I also like when I watch comedy movies, I get really jaded about what people actually find funny now. I'm like, yeah. you guys are like, it's and, so uh, bad. And I'm a don't get me wrong, I'm fucking retarded. <laughs> like I I look back at movies I would watch that would still make me laugh. I'm like, yeah. what I and then you start thinking like, wait, what I did was this really funny or am I just as dumb? As these people now, and you you actually start questioning yourself a lot, yep. And then like you just I'm like I don't under, and then you become a jaded old man. Like I don't understand what any of these fucking dumb kids like at all. Yep. And I feel bad. It's been a long time since a funny movie came out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like the, the last, last funny movie I think that came out was the fucking uh, like the the boys, like the three little kids. Oh, Good Boys. Good Boys. Good Boys. Yeah. yeah. That was so fucking funny. And then after that, I don't really think there's been anything. Uh, um, it's been a long time. I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't know. The last real funny thing that I remember seeing in the theater, I think, was Super Bad, which was like sure, 2008. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it made me laugh so hard that I, at a certain point, like, I thought about leaving the theater because, like, I just could not keep up with the movie because I was laughing oh, so hard wow. from something that just sure. happened. I think the loudest I've ever laughed, like, laughed in a movie theater. And I know it's, like, probably played out because, like, a lot of people know it. Uh, in Home Alone 2, when Marv is getting electrocuted That's in sure. the basement, I was a child. I saw it in the theater with like my dad, and like a whole row of people were like, "Did you see that? <laughs> we're all witnessing the most amazing thing in the world." That's like the last time I like was doubled over in laughter in a movie theater. That's the last time. The last time I was doubled over in laughter in a movie theater. Uh, I was in middle school. I was on a date, and I was seeing. I think it was the movie Contagion. Uh, and there's a scene where this dude walks out of a building, <laughs> feel and gets good hit movie. by a bus. <laughs> All right, yeah. Made me laugh so hard. And of course, everyone else is looking at me because it's like the climax of this super serious movie. And I just can't control myself and keep laughing. Oh, dude. It a was good, our last a good date, creaming it, it will do it every one. time. Actually, now I remember I, the, one of the last times I laughed out loud was in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Sure. And it wasn't like anything they did, it was the scene where they're, the chicks are going on the heist, and the one chick does the flips through the lasers. And then she lands at the end and lets out a huge fart. <laughs> Dude, I, I think I was one of three people in that theater that were like, this is the best fucking thing. Dude, farts in movies. Like a well-timed fart is still incredible. Dude, yeah. To that point, um, it, well, this was also unintentionally <laughs> funny. Yeah, it, 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 I'm just saying. I went to go see Midsummer with Tim Butterly, and the theater was packed, and we got the last two seats. We were in the very front row, and... Uh, Midsummer is pretty intense, mm -hmm. but there's one part where one of the characters he he like opens a jar, and he <laughs> smells it. It's disgusting, and he goes, "Smell this." To I think it might have been Francis Pugh, and uh, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> it might have been Francis Pugh, but as he says, "Here, smell this." Like Tim lets out a squeaker, <laughs> and it was just like I, I felt like I felt like I was like leaving my body. <laughs> The, the 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 timing of that thing, <laughs> and not even the, it wasn't like a bass heavy fart. No, but just, the squeaker just was enough. like perfect for that, and it's yeah. so good. That's yeah. so amazing. <laughs> well timed farts can kill you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> they can kill you. They do, they come from God. There, it's, there's there's no other explanation. It's angel <laughs> whispers. Dude. It's, it's, it's so, that's yeah. all they yeah. are, dude. Yeah, it's so fucking funny, dude. I love farts so much, and like it's crazy that. As much as I'm like, these kids are so stupid, lad. dude. You got me in front of no, farts. Yeah. I, I'll lose my mind. I found the other day. I found a a tape, a Talkboy tape recorder tape, from when I was a kid, and I put it in like a tape player just for the first time in almost like 32 years, and it's just me recording fart sounds oh, on yeah. it. And I'm like, man, that's I'm still there. That's the mind of a young I'm comedian. I'm still there. Yeah. I had a friend, my best friend for a few years, uh, my buddy Mike Fetter. Uh, I, 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 he was a great friend. He was a ton of fun. But, like, the thing that I think really roped me into our friendship was anytime I would stay at his house, he would get down on the floor. He would put his face to the floor and his ass up. Yeah. And he could just, like, suck in air through his asshole and <laughs> just expel like, it right away. And it was like, it felt like it went on the entire night. And to, I mean, to this day, it's like I, I feel like I know the funniest people on the planet, but, like, I don't know that anybody compares to Mike Fetter being able <laughs> to do that shit. I think two of the funniest farts I ever saw in my life. <laughs> <laughs> the Hall of Fame. And it sucks. It was like, they're like a total, you had to be there. But like yeah. when people are like. Dude, that's the beauty of farts. That's <laughs> what sucks. The impermanence of them. It's like, it's like they stick out of my head so much. Is They're both my older brother. 
<laughs> and the one time I was playing, I was in my room playing with my buddy Lucas, and we were just playing action figures, and all of a sudden the door kicks open, <laughs> and it's my brother in like short shorts, and he's like, <laughs> and like makes a shotgun noise, <laughs> and then pulls the trigger on the shotgun, and farts loud as shit, <laughs> and then calls us gay, and then leaves. And I was. <laughs> Dude, I dropped the action figures. I was like, oh, my God. This is the peak of comedy. I, I was dying. And then, like, almost, like, a month later, I'm in my room again, and I'm, like, hanging out with a buddy. We're, like, playing Sega, and all of a sudden, you just, like, hear the door creak. <laughs> and, like, the door creaks, and we're, like, we turn, and all of a sudden, you just see... Like an like <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock's body coming into like the shadow, just two bare ass cheeks coming in the door, and then <laughs> and then leaving, and the door somehow <laughs> closing behind it. I lost my mind. It was the fucking two of the funniest farts I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. I cannot get them out of my head. Either, dude. Is your brother still with us? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I was just gonna say, it's like you know how like uh, when kids die, their parents like don't change their bedroom. Like if your brother died, like you're just gonna be sitting in front of TV playing Sega forever. Be like, what, does Ryan ever get up to go anywhere? It's like no, he's no he's waiting for his brother. He's okay. waiting for that yeah. fart to come. Dude, he's waiting for his brother to fart. It's like kind of one of those things. Like I knew if my brother died, I would definitely <laughs> tell both of those stories. <laughs> I had, like during the eulogy, I'm like, and he farted so wild, dude. And just like, ah, uh, thank you, I love you. You'd have to plant it. a fart in that moment. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. You, yeah, have to plant someone in the crowd <laughs> with a riled up stomach. Oh man, what if he let out his death rattle, dude? <laughs> when a, a, you were doing that, <laughs> an ass death rattle would be amazing. <laughs> death rattle. <laughs> <laughs> I would honestly, if I die, I would have somebody put like something in my casket for like yeah. every now and again, just like. <laughs> Just for eternity. That would be sick. That's what I want. Just make me fart at my, my funeral, dudes. <laughs> you guys are here, dude. Just I will. We used to have this toy in middle school called the Pooter. Uh, and it would make noise. You would squeeze it and it would make yeah. a awesome loud yes. fart. Million dollar idea. And so, like, we had a teacher that hated the pooter, and like, would, <laughs> he would check us for pooters when we would come in the room. It was it Jerry Sandusky? Yeah, <laughs> dude. He was touching my pooter every time I'd come in. I gotta check you for pooters. So he, yeah, so he had his usual suspects. So we would always get someone that he wouldn't check to. to to fucking Damn, sneak dude. the pooter into the room. T-S-A-S-S. So he'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> he'd take out your ass cheeks, put your <laughs> asshole on the conveyor belt. He would, fucking, he would fucking be in the middle of his lesson and someone would hit the pooter. Wow. And he would just fucking, like, slam shit. Yeah. Just start getting furious, right? And then he'd fucking th think he knew who it was, and we would fucking pass it along. It would be coming from it's other like parts of the room. It's like when you're passing a shiv around in prison <laughs> just trying to get rid of it. Literally just fucking That's everyone's... Sick. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone was super into the pooter except the teacher, so that yeah. was a recipe for disaster. Look, if you're a teacher, you look, you. There, I think there are two things they teach you you can't compete against now. <laughs> Guns and fart. <laughs> Far, Guns like and farts. farts. There's nothing you, you're, never, you're never gonna win. It's like it's not even like even during a school shooting. I'm pretty sure it was like, oh my god, get down! Huh? It's like I'm it. definitely sure if we were in lockdown, oh, one of my friends would have so hit the pooter and get us killed. I think dude. I hear him. <laughs> I think I, I we also him. had liquid ass. Oh, liquid ass! Yeah, liquid. So my buddy poured liquid ass into the fucking heating, dude, oh, no. and Out had the fucking building evacuated. Dude, my buddy Sean. I remember I was like going to the bathroom. I, was, I had a hall bathroom out in the hall and I see my buddy Sean and an entire class lined up outside of the room. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what the fuck is this about? He's like, yeah, dude, I'll tell you later. Nobody, nobody knows. And like the teacher's like, move it along. Turns out that they had to get out of the class because they were in a science room and they thought noxious chemicals were coming up from the drain in the middle of the room. And really what it was is that Sean farted <laughs> in class uh, and nah. it smelled so bad that they didn't even pin it on a person. Like, there's no way a man could have done <laughs> this. And he's like, dude, I ripped ass so bad. He's like, I tried pinning it on Frank Mansley. Didn't work. And then it was like, no, that's not a fart. That's not a fart. That's something else. And they had to get out of the room and wait. It was like, dude, he had the best farts, too. The, oh, the worst farts man. I've ever smelled. Do you guys have a best uh, fart guy? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I have told a lot of stories on here. None of them involve farts. So there's a first time for everything. Yeah. Uh, my a, college a farts roommate. Time? <laughs> 
<laughs> my college roommate uh, could light his farts on fire. And that was like his favorite party trick was to, yeah, lay I can do that. baby legs over his head and the lighter at his ass. And so one night we're all around just laughing at him doing this. And then the, there was like our floor and the girls' floor below us. And there was this one girl that like everyone loved. She was just the queen of the building. Uh, and so she walks in just to like say, I don't remember what the fuck, but just like walks in and sees all of us around him <laughs> huddled over, lighting his farts on fire. And he just gets stage fright, and so we're all just sitting there for five minutes, just being like, <laughs> Dude, wait, wait, no. wait, it's really cool. Wait, <laughs> no. wait, wait. wait. <laughs> There's nothing worse than just like, guys, hold on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> hold on, guys. And all of us were like, please, please, dude, show her the thing. <laughs> show <laughs> her the thing. Show her the thing. <laughs> as if she was going to be impressed by it. Yeah. So la- yeah. Uh, as if it was going to be any less bad than her not knowing what was going no, on. No, yeah. when it happened, was she finally like... She oh. left. And then right, oh, right as she left, his no. comments came back, and he was able to make it happen. Dude. dude. Did you ever think about like messaging her on Facebook and be like, yo, now that we're I still know, should. 20 years yeah. removed, yeah. like, what do you think of it now? <laughs> Would you have laughed? Was it cool? <laughs> I just need this for me. I need this for me. Yeah, no, she was she was a queen, and it was, yeah, to have her walk in on us in her lowest moment. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, queen, queens and farts. They don't blend, yeah. No. no. They fart, yeah. though. Playing with the they queen do. of farts. I was just watching. Did you watch that uh, that Dallas Cowboys thing on Netflix, The Cheerleaders? I haven't. I think I've heard about it. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good, but uh, there's one moment where a cheerleader, her mom is like, got the vibrator gun to her butt cheeks, and she farts in her mom's face. And they think it's cute, but... It just It was horny me. as hell. Turn me on. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's dude, I can't. Turn me on. <laughs> yeah, dude. Chicks farting is always funny. <laughs> well, chicks, and they pretty, stink. They're sharp. I, I like when it. They, I like when it, they stink, it's so funny. I like it when it sounds like it comes out of a man. <laughs> oh, yeah, I yeah. No, like you don't, don't want to. You don't want to. <laughs> no, not an excuse me. It's no, like, no. What the fuck? You don't want to. You don't want to whisper. You want to shout. I'm definitely the it. fart guy in my group of friends, for sure. <laughs> Seems hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> now, this might shock you guys. <laughs> this might turn heads. How, how, long is, how long do you think it takes a fart from, <laughs> uh, from bowels to general population <laughs> for you? To gen pop? Gen poop? <laughs> um... Uh, that was I, a chair. Dude, I, I that was, was a chair. You just far right, dude. I that was, was a about, chair. I was Yo, spit. <laughs> that was the chair. Now, that was uh, sick. I started. Well, we ate Taco Bell last night. What yeah, midnight? Yeah. Dude, we fucked yeah. up. By the time <laughs> it hit trouble. like one fifteen, I was far ten. Dude, yes, you were. <laughs> but that's the thing. When everyone slept, I was like. In and out of sleep, dude. We were lighting that room up. Everybody, there was not like one person you could have never played. Couldn't yeah. blame anybody. I was we trying to time them because the, the <laughs> AC would switch on periodically and it would make a bunch of noise. And like when that started going, because I was like half asleep the entire dude. night. Like I was rolling around and just fucking, I, yeah, I was trying to time. I was trying to let those out while the air was blowing. <laughs> no, get it away oh, from me. I loved it all, man. A few things compare, especially like as you get older, you, you know, it feels like uh, how I imagine like a band of brothers feels where it's like they're just dying off. Yep. Where like you really start to appreciate at one point. Farting with your middle-aged friends, yeah, dude. Yep. like Jimmy's young. Uh, Ryan's closer to my age, but I'm 45, so any chance I get to just fart in a room with my boys, yeah, yeah I'm just this young hot yeah. tight farter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this young hot tight. He's farts. young, dumb, and full of gas. <laughs> yeah, I've had a couple of bunk bed experiences recently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the thousand fart stare. <laughs> <laughs> we just like don't look at it. you. You're too green right now. <laughs> you ain't in until you eat some shit. Boy. You want me on that toilet? You need me on that. <laughs> Toilet. <laughs> You're goddamn right. I ordered the Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah. Fart, farts, farts are great. Mm-hmm. A few good farts. Yeah, a few good I farts. Was, I was Baja blasting <laughs> all night. Dude, you were, dude. Yeah. It was pretty fucked, honestly. Yeah, it was. But it was like funny because like I got up and I took a shit because I was like I, I wanted to, I wanted to shit while my boys were asleep. But I didn't want to fucking blow that toilet up. Oh, I was, very I was just trying to be nice because I knew it was gonna be fucked up. <laughs> and I on the way like I got up and it was like, <laughs> and then I farted in front of Jimmy. <laughs> I farted in front of Mike. Got in the bathroom, lit that up, and then came out and then did the same thing and laid down again. But as <laughs> I was coming back in the I like room. That we all snuggled and watched dude. juice. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that was the thing. The juice was loose after that, dude. We were fucking. I walked back out and like I walked in to like I left bombs, but then they released <laughs> the bombs steam room. to like fucking fight with my fart. I walked into a fucking battle, dude. Just full Dragon Balls. It was so <laughs> fucked up. 
And then I, it was funny because then I was, I was just sleeping on the floor and like when I got on the floor, I couldn't smell it anymore. <laughs> they were like literally above Stop me. It was fucked up. Yeah, heat rises, baby. <laughs> it definitely did. I felt bad for you guys. It's like above a diamond me. heist. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking gross, <laughs> but so funny. And it's like makes me wonder if that room smells right now. Yeah, I mean, how how do, how do they how do hotels yeah. get farts out of the rooms? That's, Most of the windows that's don't open. That's what my job is from now on. <laughs> yeah. Unanswered questions. <laughs> the fucking mysteries of the world. It'd be funny to seriously ask them <laughs> if you went to the desk. Like, look, we just ate. We just ate a lot of Taco Bell. There's three of us in there. How are you guys gonna get the farts out? Will we be charged more? Yeah, we actually need to charge you seventy five dollars. <laughs> they call the Ghostbusters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the girl ones because they're maids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not the guy. Ones. I like showing up, having your room prorated in the hotel to explain the guys <laughs> in the room the night before just farted too much and they can't charge the full Sorry. price for the room. <laughs> the guys in here farted too much. <laughs> we, we let them bring the crunch the wraps into the building. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever have you ever uh, farted on something that has affected somebody later? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I can't remember a time at the moment, but dude, <laughs> sounds buddy, like you have. Yeah. My buddy Charlie bare ass farted on one of my friends Sean Stromboli's, and then uh, later he got like a form of dysentery. <laughs> <laughs> Was out of work for three days straight. It wasn't a fart, but um, I had a friend. So our friend group used to always drink at my boy Steve's house, and we'd always just hang in his room. And then one of our buddies got a girlfriend who would just. When she, when she was ready to leave, he would have to leave. And it was so annoying because he was a cool guy. He was very fun to hang out with. And we would just sit in Steve's room and drink Coronas. Now, my friend, this guy Vinny, had just opened a Corona. And his wife whispers in his ear. And he's like, you know what? I think I'm going to head out. It's like, come on, man. So we saved that beer. And I stuck the tip of it in my asshole. <laughs> yeah. And then put it back in the fridge and put a special marking on it to designate it as Vinny's beer. When he came back, that's the beer we gave him. And uh, he's like, I don't feel so good. And he went home that night, and he, he got a little bit sick. And then when he came back the next time, we had a little bit of an argument, so I told him what I did. And that was the end of the friendship. Wait, how did that come up in the argument? He used a little bit twice there. Once we're a little bit sick, and once a little bit of an argument. And yeah, one of those has to be a lie. What was the argument Dude, about? Dude, it was a lot of bit of asshole. It was a lot of it. It was probably about home. him leaving when she told him to leave. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then pretty quickly, like... Yeah, you know when you have some locked and loaded, like it's gonna come out. Pussy whip, bro. You yeah, can't have that. You know, you know what I did, <laughs> dude. It was like the end of seven. <laughs> <laughs> What's in the bottle, <laughs> dude? My granny has the upper hand now. <laughs> <laughs> if you drink that Corona, he wins, <laughs> dude. i uh, that's uh, so wait. What did he do after you told him that? We never spoke again. Oh, wow. <laughs> I saw his dad at a movie theater, and I walked <laughs> up, like, thinking, like, he definitely told him because the dad's reaction was just, like, <laughs> I'm going to shake your hand, but, like. How do you look your dad in the eye and have that conversation? <laughs> well, he was a very sweet boy. Like, it, it seems like any time, like, he was troubled by anything, sure. I could picture him telling his parents. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard thing to tell. Dude, I would never tell my parents no, that. No, no, no. Why are you why, why are you sick? Mike Brady. <laughs> my put friend a, put I, his butthole in my okay, beer. No, no. Mike put a fucking bottle of beer in his butthole and I drank it. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. Uh, Corona is the best bottle for I mean, <laughs> putting that up your butt. begs for it. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, it's good when it gets a little wider in the middle. Yeah, That's it's good. good. It's got good. butt plug energy. It's a Mexican butt plug. Yeah. <laughs> you could easily butt chug all these fucking <laughs> things. Make it, make... <laughs> butt chugging NA beers is so dark. <laughs> <laughs> You're so lost as yeah. a man. I'm that still place. sober. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's wild. Mm. When I drink NA beer, I usually drink two at a time. <laughs> is that what people mean when they're California sober? They <laughs> drink beers in their ass. <laughs> That's San Francisco sober. That's San Francisco <laughs> sober, dude. Yeah, yeah. Damn, yeah. Uh, it's wild. Jesus. You know, I, I'm pretty sure most people... I, the worst part about any beer is you would think if it's NA, they would make a way to not have your <laughs> pee like it's regular beer, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Do something for me. I'm taking the steps to not be a fucking terrible piece of shit. You're still going to give me all the dumb side effects of beer, not the... The good feelings and the cool drivings or anything like that? You're going to make me just pee like an idiot? Fucking dumb. Who the fuck do I have to contact for this? I'll put in a good word. Thank yeah. God. 
<laughs> Hell yes. Uh, my last order of business here, or yeah, uh, of all the <laughs> formal topics we've covered so far. Uh, the one thing I like to get a sense of, like, for my band friends, like, were you six years old playing the drums? Like, where does drums come in or where does music come in? For you guys, like, were you theater kids growing up? Like, where does the confidence to come on stage come from? Like, it seems like a... I would never do it. I'm trying to figure out like what possesses someone <laughs> to be bold enough at yeah, 16, 18, 20, whenever you guys started. I think it's so, more delusion than anything else. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, but yeah, the first time I went up, I did get a couple laughs. There were like, there were only a handful of people left at this open mic because they kept telling me, yeah, you're going on next, next, next. And then the guy's like, yeah, the, the last comedian for the night, and it wasn't me. But like, I was so prepared. I brought my wife. I, bu- I brought my friend Steve. And uh, I was like, can I just go up? Like, everybody's leaving. Can I just go up now while the mic's still on? He's like, yeah, go for it. So I went up, and I and I got a couple laughs, and that was enough. I think that was enough to, like, fuel me even to this day. We're like, all right, I think I can do this. And regardless of how many times I eat shit, I think <clears throat> that moment was enough to, to kind of keep it going. Interesting, yeah. yeah. That first first little boost of, like, oh, there's possibility yeah. here. Yeah, that's, interesting. That's kind of, I'm in the same boat. Like, I remember the first time I did stand-up, I tried... <clears throat> the first time I did stand up, I did it. Do you remember the tritone? Do you remember that? It's across from Bob and Barbara's. It's now the fucking wine, whatever it is now. But anyway, there was this dumb open mic there. But for a month straight, actually two months straight, I tried signing up at Helium for the open mic because that's the only one I knew about. And I still lived outside of the city. So every Tuesday, I would drive to Philadelphia, sign up, wait, and then drive back home because there was nothing to do. Mm. And then eventually, I just like found that open mic. And I remember telling myself, because, like, my boys came because they were, like, super pumped. And I remember telling myself, like, if this doesn't go well, I never have to do this again. Like, that was, it was a very hard, I'm not going to follow something that isn't going to be a little bit okay the first time. Sure. And the first time I did it, it went pretty well. I was like, oh, yeah, I guess I can do this. But I knew if, it, if I ate shit... We, I would never, ever go back on See, stage. You said ever it's again. delusion that makes you do it. So I'm thinking of all the people who go do uh, stand up for the first time on Kill Tony. And it's like, no, that's delusion. Like, this sounds like a very like healthy way to go try and like. Uh, but it's, it's a healthy way, but it's also like a, it's a very like, when a lot of people are like, you'll get him next time, guy. Sure. Dude, this was like the first time, like, if I don't get anything, I'm fucking out. Like, yeah. I w- remember like being, I, this is just another pipe dream. This is just another dumb thing you have in your head. Uh, and it because it went well that first time, that's when you get into all the shit you're gonna eat. That's you, you just open yourself up for eating a bunch of shit later. It's, yes, yeah. That's how it goes. That went for me. Yeah. Hmm. What about you, Jim? We were a theater kid. Me? Yeah. Where does this thing come oh, from? Oh, dude, me. Fuck. I started like at the end of 2021, and or 2020. Oh hell yeah! Like okay. December 2020, I started. I had a good set my first time, and it was it. Like, I, I always wanted to do it, though. And then the world shut down. Yep. I got laid off. I was like, literally, when I got laid off, I realized I had nothing. Like, I yeah. had no life. Yep. I was like, fuck, all I do is work and, like, get high with my friends. And then I was like, fuck, I have no, like, That's thing that life. I give a fuck <laughs> You're about. You're doing great already. <laughs> yeah. I literally, it, it, to me, it felt like I had nothing. Yeah. And I always yeah. wanted to do this thing. And then, like, I went and saw a show at this fucking litter box in the middle of fucking Pennsylvania nowhere. And then, like, they were, made an announcement that they had an open mic. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to fucking do it. I always wanted to. And then I did it. And I stuck with it. And then the guy that I did the thing at, he put me on a show for the first time. And then it was just like, the second I got put on a show, it was like, this is fucking done. I'm doing this. Yeah. And so that's pretty much now this is where I am. Were you like writing before your first set? Or did you go up Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I went up with jokes and you everything. Had, like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think you always, I mean, I, I wrote stand up, like stand up formatted jokes when I was in middle school and high school. And I would write yeah. them with like, in my head, I'm like, this is something I'll just never do. And then I just had a bunch of them. And then it wasn't until, like, after a while, I was helping my buddy, uh, like, you know, write a script for, like, some film school project. And he was, like, going over some of the jokes. He's like, dude, he's like, do you have any, like, these are, like, stand-up jokes. Like, you should just do them. Like, you just go to an open mic. Like, and that's what started that was my buddy being, like, just go do it and just see what happens. And then, yeah, it was just from that. But, like, I, I had jokes from when I was, like, <clears throat> in ninth grade. Damn. That like I thought was like this would be dumb, and I was really into saying faggot. It was probably it was wild how many jokes that was like a punchline. I was like, this will hit so that's hard. Every night that's every punchline. Such yeah. an edge lord. Get her done, man. That's yeah, still, exactly. I mean, dude. that's a lot of comedians' punchlines, man. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I was yeah. such an edge lord in ninth grade. I was like, yo, I'm gonna be so. I'm pushing boundaries. It was like, 
No, you're just retarded. <laughs> just retarded. Hell yes. Uh, we are just about to our hour, and I don't want to hold you guys for too long. I oh appreciate y'all. No, I appreciate you having us, man. Hold uh, us in this basement forever. <laughs> <dude>. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe it. <laughs> Your words, not mine. Uh, the question I'd like to wrap up on here. So the podcast, yeah, it's called From Everyone. It came from this idea of learning something from everyone, uh, which I think is still tacky, and I hate when it leaves my mouth, mm-hmm. but it is genuine to this idea of like, yeah, I think I'm self-employed. I do all this shit independently, and it makes me feel a lot more sane to mm-hmm. hear people like you guys who are also doing similar independent ventures, and it's like, yeah. okay, I'm not totally crazy in this shit. Uh, one thing I like to ask people like you guys is what is something that you're currently learning so i think i have a tendency or we have a tendency to look at people who are doing it i think you guys are great at what you do uh and so i have a tendency to look at people like you guys and go oh they've got it figured out they're just they're coasting on what they've got and i know that isn't the case so i'm curious of like yeah what are you currently what is something you are currently trying to make better uh whether it's a joke or anything getting more shows and yeah what is something you're currently learning trying to improve on in the context of yeah stand-up podcasting whatever uh, i think um i get very impatient and i can be sometimes like demanding and unreasonable in my expectations of people that I work with, whether it's not even just people that I work with, but also like family and, sure. and friends and shit. So one thing I, I've been more conscious of since I had like a, a fucking meltdown in February is that I have to like choose my words much wiser than I had previously. So if there's any kind of conflict, I know that I got to take a step back for a second before I, I directly address it. The world's not going to fucking collapse if I, if I don't address a podcast issue immediately or if, you know, there, there's something going on at home, if I yeah. don't address it right then, it, it can get addressed soon, but I have to take my time to think about what I want to say and how I want to approach it without going scorched earth on the yeah. people I'm interacting with. I hope I'm not uh, digging too deep here, but I, I would have thought the Delco proper and whatever, I don't know exactly the fallout there, but I would assume that, yeah, I... What I've heard, what I've learned is from you guys is that, like, yeah, it was this high high that we thought was going to happen, and then at the last minute, the carpet's pulled out. Yeah. yeah. And it feels like that would have been a really good precursor of everything that comes next to it. Like, if you can endure that <clears throat> storm, then all the other storms seem much more endurable. It was, and to that specifically, it was, there was, it was everything that I had hoped that would happen was on the verge of happening. Yeah. And one thing that made it even harder was, like, Everybody in my orbit like knew about it, like friends, family, coworkers, yep. and people would ask. And it's like, you know, some people would ask with like good intentions because they wanted to see good shit happen. But then other people would ask because they wanted to see the rug get pulled out. Yeah. So having to tell people like, no, it's not a thing anymore. Like I could see some people delight in that and other people were genuinely like, like sad that it didn't happen. But yeah, yeah without without that failing. I don't think I there's I wouldn't be doing anything I'm doing now. There's no Chrysler 300. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no doubt. And like now is this is the much this is the path I want to be on. That's where it's awesome. like yeah. I do the shit I want to do with the yeah. people that I want to do it with and I'm not waiting for somebody to validate me or say like please pick me. I'm good, I promise. Yeah. You know, it's it's much more liberating than just waiting for somebody specific to make a decision on what your future holds. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can only imagine that yeah it must have been so confining the time and it's a weird thing of like that was a life you thought you wanted but it would have been a velvet prison i think where it's like yeah if you get sucked up into that yeah network tv thing where i'm sure it'd been fun i'm sure the the paycheck associated with it would have been <laughs> lovely but uh yeah it seems like this is a much better path of yeah freedom no and creative freedom and being able to do what you want and yeah have a barbecue <laughs> and invite yeah all the for people. real yeah but, yeah it makes it happen hell yes Brian, well, something, yeah, learn and work uh, on. I mean, nothing, I don't have, uh, I mean, not to go as deep as Mike, but I've been learning origami. I, yes. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was terrible. No, <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I get where Mike is coming from because, um, especially when, uh, to go back to the Delco proper thing, like, I made the mistake of telling so many people, much like you did, mm-hmm. about it. And yep. I learned one, like, even with tires. Yep. When I found out that was going to be on Netflix, I didn't tell anybody mm-hmm. until day of. Yep. Like, I didn't tell, like, not my, my girlfriend who lives with me, she didn't know until, like, the night before. And she's like, why didn't you say it? It's like, because I'm not going to get, like, I got so pumped for Delco proper because we did that table read up in New York. Like, everything yeah. was so, it was like, this is amazing. Like, mm-hmm. I can't believe this is happening. And that was such a kick in the nuts. And, like, yeah. I remember just being like, don't. It, it's like you become kind of jaded because you're like, don't get excited about anything. That's just exactly. Don't, yeah. don't get excited. Yeah. Because the moment you get excited and also don't tell 
anybody until something's already done. Because yes. the moment you're like, I remember telling my mom, like, yo, I'm going to be on TV. Mm-hmm. Yep. She's like, what? And of course, my mom's a fucking megaphone, <laughs> tells everyone in the fucking neighborhood like a retarded person. <laughs> And I remember, like, my cousin Rich, like, getting hold of me and, like, talking about it. I'm like, yeah. He's like, when? When? I'm like, it's coming. It's coming. Big and then you, coming soon. You, yeah. you sound like the biggest dickhead yes. in the world. And yeah. I think after that, you know, I got really bummed out with myself. And uh, I think one thing I'm trying to learn is not, I, I mean, for the longest time and current, I'm incredibly critical and cruel to myself sure. as a person. And it gets to a point where, like, it's like people who have been close to me in like either a relationship or, or really close friends. It's almost insulting to them, like they are mad that I'm saying such ter- like we're being not even a defeatist. It's it, there's not even a defeat. I've already been defeated. If anything, I'm trying to find a way to put more dirt on myself so I actually rot completely, mm-hmm. and maybe something will grow out of that. It, but I I just pile it on. And I have no, I don't give myself any grace for failure. I also am very quick to just become so irate with myself because I know lashing out at anybody else is not the right way to go. It's not good for anyone. And But it comes down to a like, why am I lashing out at them? Every source of that problem, if I wanted to point the finger, I'd have to do it in front of a mirror. Yep. I know that I'm the cause of all of it. So then it just piles on top of me. So trying to learn not to be such a fucking dump truck of bullshit on myself is like, I don't even know if I'll ever, like it's one of those things where you're learning, but like you can teach a dude math all day. If he doesn't understand the process or the numbers, like he'll never learn, he'll get a concept, but he'll never learn and I think that's like where I'm at. It's like I, I get what you're saying. And the worst yeah. part is I, I feel like you'll do that weird autistic thing where like you just do it to appease people now and you know that that's the right way to be, but you're not really accepting any of it. So like learning to try to get out of that mindset is like it's a task, but like as like, you know, you're like, oh, I got to grow. But yes. you also you feel like. Once you reach a certain age, you're like, I'm not learning new shit no more. Like, fuck that. I've done all the improvement I could ever do on myself. It's yeah. like, I didn't die yet. Yep. It's like, no, no, no. You're eventually killing. You're like slowly yeah. killing yeah. yourself that you don't even know. So learning to try to get uh, around that is uh, is hard. But yeah, that's what I'm learning. Uh, and it sucks. What makes it even worse is like you feel so shitty. You're like, it took me this long to even try to begin to learn. You feel like such a mm-hmm. moron. Even right now, I'm yeah, doing yeah, the same yeah. thing I yep. just talked about. Like, you're so mad at yourself. <laughs> like, you fucking idiot. Yep. You didn't realize that was a thing. It's like yep. you're you you try to get around it, and that's that's what I'm learning. Yeah. That's the thing I'm learning. No, it resonates with me. And I think I also have trouble with it. Cause it's like I think that. <laughs> Self dickness, like being an asshole to me, is what makes me good at the thing. Like, I think that sure. is where yeah. I have gotten better at editing videos is by looking at them and going, "This sucks. It all sucks. I fucked it all up. Let's go back to square one and figure out how to make it suck one bit less." Yeah. And I've just done that for long enough that it's like, yeah, I'm not not an expert. I'm not Steven Spielberg, whoever the fucking yeah Michael Jordan of video editing is, but like I'm certainly better than I was ten years ago when I got yeah. into it. And it's like I attribute that to being hypercritical and hyper aware of what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. But I understand that, that is yeah a short term thing that doesn't have great long term outcome either. No. And it's yeah this bizarre balance of always like, well, I don't want to lose this like thing that I think has gotten me better at the thing. Yeah. But also I understand that yeah if I hate everything forever, then I'm <clears throat> just gonna hate myself in the long yeah, run. That's it's so pretty counterintuitive. Yeah. Dumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst thing in the world. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fucking cross that bridge. Sunrise, we sunset, dude. I don't know. Jimmy, what's something yeah, learning? What are you working on? What is how are you gonna become a better comic podcaster, whatever um, the goal is? I fucking like uh I love it so much, and it's the only thing that people have ever told me that I'm good at. Sure. So I'm trying kisser. to I'm trying to believe <laughs> in it, you know? Like I'm trying to I'm trying to fucking take it seriously, trying to learn how to be a pro. Like yeah. how does someone who wants to do this for their career conduct themselves how do they do this and that and you know like i all i've done so far is just try to work hard and that has gotten me really good opportunities in a short time like like these guys are like doing like a ton of incredible things and it's like i don't know I, i'm on this I, I came with them like that's fucking crazy you know what i mean it's like so everything's happening in a short time so it's like i'm just trying to like stay 
like on top of myself like i know yeah. like i have like i could do time now but i i want to build more i want to i want to i want to do specials i want to do you know i want to create shit so it's like I don't, and I don't know how to do any of that. So I'm just yeah. like, I'm trying to surround myself with people. Like, I'm a firm believer that you become a sum of the parts that sure. you surround yourself with. Yeah. yeah. So, like, you must I'm be sh- surrounding yourself with a lot of people. <laughs> oh my God. You wouldn't believe. And uh, I'm actually about to orbit Jim right now. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> back to my serious thought. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> I remember when I was quiet. Yeah. And you were, <laughs> <laughs> Let's harken back to f- Dude, 45 I'm seconds ago. And Dude, I didn't want to. Then Mike like, fucking gets a piece of me to myself. And then yeah. now I'm going to do it with the gym. <laughs> yeah, so no. So I'm very even keel and like everyone loves me. So, um, and I don't really hammer on myself because I'm like hot and young and tight. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> you are. Incredible. No, I, I fucking, I don't know, man. I just, I fucking try to stay on top of, you know, men. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I'm just I'm trying to do this, and yeah. I have no backup plan, and I think that makes me work harder. Yeah, because like there's no safety net. I don't have an education. I don't have a trust fund. I don't have a family. It's just me doing my damn thing. So, kind of just have to dive in. Is it so. scary to be getting in? Where I think in the context of music videos, like I'm very aware that I'm whatever eight years in, ten years in, and like I'm very aware that I'm still very new. Where all the confidence I think I have is like. I understand that eight years is not a long time in the context of, yeah, how long people do things and get good at it. Uh, I'm thinking back, yeah, the podcast, I'm a year and a half in, and I feel like I'm very aware of, like, I'm better than I was a year ago, and in another year, I'm going to look back and be like, God damn, I was awful at this thing. As a, yeah, as a comic who's coming up, are you, like, scared to put yourself out there because you don't want to put out a version of you that isn't the final version of you? Like, is there... How do you balance those? No, two things, because I, I feel as though like the more people that see me, the more opportunities I'll get, and then with that, the more stage time, the more confidence you get, and then yeah. with that, you're able to just be better. Like there yeah. are things, there are things that I wrote a couple years ago that because I'm a better performer now, I can actually make it funny rather than like having this thing that I can't really communicate clearly enough because I'm fucking like anxious as fuck, like trying yeah. to get it all out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like you know you learn and grow, and it's just like I don't know. I try to fucking I just I just try to work hard at it and do it as much as I can. I try to get out there as much as I can. That's really and it's all I know. It's like this is the only thing I really give a fuck about. So it's like Are there a ton of like local mics in Philly? Like is it easy to go out a Yeah, and like a week? I create rooms too. Like I try to pop shit up all the time. Like I'm always just trying to like do more and more and because that's just it this is what I want. Like I like podcasting and shit, but like I want Stand up. Like, that's yeah. what I want. So it's like, I don't know. I'm just trying to learn how to conduct myself like a pro and take it as serious as I can and, you know, surround myself with people that aren't hobbyists. They want to fucking also, you know, yes. so that's that's really it. It's, it's yeah. trying to keep company that is, pro- like, productive. I think that is the best part of being self-employed, or being in the creative world that I found is, yeah, I'm around people who are similarly fucked in the head to me, where it's like there's... Uh, a discomfort that comes with this life that you kind of have to opt for and there's a more comfortable road to life of having a much more predictable job and lifestyle and income and it's like that's not me I, yeah, and I feel yeah. like being in this space has like found me yeah people like you guys where it's like I think we are wired similarly where that initial discomfort is worth it in the hopes of getting good at a thing long time in the long run and like being good at a thing is more valuable than just being comfortable and yeah having but all I, the I wouldn't even know how to habits. do that comfortable life thing that's probably also I wouldn't there, even yeah. know how yeah. to do that yeah. like when people are like you could just do this I'm like I I've tried. I don't know yeah. like yeah. how would yeah. I know what are you, how to what are you fucking have a nine about? to five like I don't know yeah. how to do that I That's tried. A there, was, there was yeah. a job I had up until I think December twenty one, and it was a job that I thought I would have until I didn't want it anymore. Yep. Is this a school for special yeah. needs? Yeah. I worked in a school for kids with autism at a similar time. It, yeah. It was, it's the same it, kind of like a setup, yeah. and it yeah. was like just in an instant they're like, "All right, we're uh, we're laying people off, and if you do, you can choose to be reassigned to this, you know, part of the company, which is." something entirely different than what my job was, which I didn't want to do. And you had to like email them yes or no by this specific time and this specific date. And I didn't get back to them in time. And it was like, I was just done. And this was a job I thought I was going to have forever. Yeah. And it was just like, fuck this shit, man. This, everything that I felt was certain is no longer certain. So, yep. you know, what's, what's the incentive to not try and do this Yeah, and just, you have to know that you're gonna. There's always going to be a little something inside of you yep. telling you the bottom can fall out any minute. Yep. 
And it's like whether you're certain or uncertain, that exists. Yep. So I think once you reconcile with that, you're much better off and you're able to address whatever it is that you're setting out on. Definitely. Yeah, I feel like uh, I worked at a summer camp for a while and that became a lot of like DCF stuff of just dealing with the kids who are not in great homes. And I am now the middleman as an 18 year old going between the, yeah, the broken parents and the broken child. And it's like, <coughs> okay, that's heavy, but maybe I'll try something else. And I ended up in the school for kids with autism. And again, it was like, this is a great population to help. They need me or need help as much as any population I can think of, but it's still just not quite doing it for me. And that was when right. it was like, okay, this, yeah, this isn't the path for me. Cause if these two things that I think are as good <clears throat> uses of my time as possible still aren't fulfilling, then it's like, mm -hmm. okay, well, something else must be, because if this isn't fulfilling... Yeah, and, and even so, it's like, yeah. it's like you were of service for a particular period of time. Yeah. So it's like, even if you're, you're in that capacity for like a fucking month, it's like, it's a lot more than most people would do. Yeah. So there's, I don't know, there's nobility in that, and it's, you know... Did you feel, feel any guilt? When you're like, Definitely. yo, you autistic kids just aren't doing it for me anymore. Did <laughs> you, you sat them all down. Did you yeah. feel like, yeah, look, it's not, it's not I'll me. I'll frame it a little bit different. <laughs> look, it's you guys. I can't anymore. I can't. And there is something there where it's like it was beautiful to help them and help them grow as much as you could. But there is the realization of like the the ceiling for them isn't that high. And you're helping them get as close to that ceiling as possible. But like you are not going to cure this. Like we're not going to fix them. And these were kids who had placed out of public school. And so they were in the schools, like the staff ratio was like two to one. So it was two staff per student. Uh, so everyone was super hands-on, very uh, unique academic plans and everything. So there was some sense of like, yeah, some guilt of leaving them. Like, oh, I don't want to give up on you guys. Like the system already gave up on you. And that's why you're here. I don't want to <laughs> yeah. add to that problem. It's not me. It's the system. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 Well. I was nice when you were being serious. <laughs> it feels good, doesn't it? It does. It feels good. It does I know, good. I know. I get why you guys did it. Nah. <laughs> Dude, it's yeah. so easy. It's like someone just buried it. I was like, ah, oh, fucking get it. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's like someone just clocked a shotgun and farted yeah, right into yeah, yeah, Dude, right. I fucking emotionally farted on you right now. Dude. <laughs> Beautiful, friends. I appreciate you guys coming through. Episode Thanks 74 for, for oh, everyone. Dude, this was great. Um, this yes, was please fun. go through and plug any social medias. Where can we find you guys? Yeah, where can people follow you online? Jim oh, yeah. Follow me uh, on Instagram at Jim Gillespie Comedy and at my podcasts, uh, fucking at Two in the Stink and at Close to Hell. Hell yes. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Shaner Cobbedy, C O B B E D Y after Shaner. You can find me on the end podcast with Ryan Shaner. Wherever you get your podcast from, make sure you call the hotline 833 443 5300 with anything you want to say. Those we will questions address it. are beautiful. They are out of control. We're looking for the best and brightest. <laughs> most retarded people. Actually, we're looking for all the people that you gave up on in that <laughs> yeah. in that yeah. school. All you, all my low ceiling heads yeah, out there. All, all you, <laughs> yeah, damn. It's, I, right I, here. it's funny we're calling people low ceilings, but we're like the ceiling is three feet above yeah. us, right? <laughs> it's weird because I couldn't do the low ceiling salute anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's the one and a half it's right. The, <laughs> <laughs> the quarter right. <laughs> mm. Oh damn, the three thirds right. <laughs> Um, <laughs> check out my podcast, uh, Dad Me Podcast. I do it with the funniest dude on the planet, Tim Butterly. And then uh, my other true crime podcast, Little Stinkers, with my homeboys, John Del Calo and Jake Matera. And then uh, I've written a bunch of books, and I'm going to keep writing more. You can check those out at my website, onperks.com. That's O-N-P-E-R-C-S.com. Dude, yeah. thank you for having us. Cool. Thank, thank you guys for coming through. I appreciate it. Yeah, so much fun, man. You crushed it last night, and I'm sure you're going to do it again tonight. So, yeah, thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Stoked to hear in, yeah, the future of the podcast and all the cool shit that you guys, I'm sure, cooking that hasn't made it to my ears yet. Like, awesome. Uh, hell yes, guys. Appreciate you coming through. Episode 74 from everyone. We did it. Mm -hmm.